you're ready to say, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. How many of you use uh, some sort of PowerPoint or, or keynote for your trainings? Some sort of visual aid, right? How many of you love PowerPoint? <clears throat> I know that's the answer I always get. Why don't you like it? You, you like it. Why don't everybody else? Why don't we? Better than an overhead. <laughs> it doesn't say much, does it? Right? What's the problem with PowerPoint? I think the problem for me is it depends on who's making it. If I'm putting one together that I made, if it's me and it's my personality, it's great. But I'm doing someone else's. Sure. Sure. Too much animation. Too much animation? Like Not enough cowbell. <laughs> you can still reference that, yeah. How many of you know what he's talking about? Not enough cowbell. Oh, yeah. Saturday Night Live. Yeah. And we got the microphone working too. Everyone say thanks, Robert. Thanks, Robert. Robert. No problem. So I'll be able to talk throughout the rest of the day as well. Although you know it's not going to be talking the entire time anyway. Um, how many of you have the ability to customize your PowerPoint and your slides? How many of you have to use it the way it is? Yeah, so you're probably going to hate some of what we're going to get into for the next 40 minutes because you'll be like, well, I can't do anything with some slides. But there are still recommendations we can make and other things that we can make adjustments to. So we're going to jump into the 23 laws of slide design. First one is a visual aid. Make it visual. No paragraphs, right? Make it as visual as possible. If you're talking about some sort of part, put the part on the page, not the name of the part. Nice and simple, right? The first law, you break this law, you've broken everything else. It's a visual aid, which means it is for who? You or them? Them. them. You should not need the slides. The slides are a guide, and they're an aid for people who need to see what you're talking about. So it's a visual aid, make it visual. visual. That's the first law. The second law is to keep it simple because it's for them, not you. You shouldn't need a script. If you maybe you know in PowerPoint there's a place called the notes section. You can put your own script in there. If you use a fancy computer or if you use it in a certain <coughs> way, you can have some script on the slide. You notice I don't even have script up here. I just have exactly what you're looking at. Know your stuff, keep it simple. Nobody wants things more complicated. That's law number two. Number, I'm sorry. The consumption of alcohol may cause you to tell your friends over and over again that you love them. Alcohol plays a major role and causes you to dance like an idiot. It may lead to pregnancy. Alcohol creates you losing that your shoulders are better than looking than most people, and you're not. Alcohol may leave you wondering what the heck happened to your pants. No person's necessary restrictions may apply. Just wanted to let you know, if you're going to put a lot of text on the slide, that's the only way you deliver it. Because it's entertaining. Otherwise, no paragraphs. Keep it simple. Are you with me on that? Yes. Make it fun. Make it fun for them as well. Less is more, fancy is what? Distracting, right? The more crazy things that you do, the more distracting the audience is going to get. The same thing with the room and this atmosphere and the environment. <coughs> the more things you do with this room. You know the thing that I like the least about this room? That I have to have my power cord here. Did anyone else notice that? Yes. yes. Yeah, right? That's the only, there's no other cords. I looked underneath here, I'm like, what is everything else plugged into? There's more than just one thing here. And they're all plugged into a different um, amplifier, but there's no more spots. And there's no spots in the wall over here. And I even tried to move this thing. I'm like, I can't move that. That is my least favorite thing in the room. You're not supposed to see that. The audience is not supposed to see anything that you don't want them to see. So take a look around the room. What is it that they should not need to see and get rid of it? I've gone into auditoriums where there's a piano on stage. I'm like, please get rid of the piano. I will not be playing. I don't know how to play, and you don't want to hear it when I do. If it's not necessary for the training itself, get rid of it. Right? Fourth one, everything needs to be bigger. Nobody's bringing binoculars to your training. We talked about small fonts, right? What size font do you think this is? 74. Over 
125. I don't know the actual number. All I know is it's over 125. Right? And this is size 11. What does 11 look like in the back row? Can you read it? Yes, no, squint a little bit, right? Make everything bigger and use light math grounds and dark text on that background. Don't use dark text on dark backgrounds or even sometimes light text on light backgrounds. When is light text on light backgrounds good? When you're reading on a tablet at night. That's it. You know, people say all the time to me, why is your background so bland, so white? I'm like, well, because every now and then you're in a room that's either terribly lit or really well lit and then you can't see anything. Right? Sometimes I'm on a stage and there's lights shining on the screen. So depending on what your room looks like, try to avoid this because people can't see dark on dark or light on light. Number six, source your statistics. And make sure they add up right. Have you ever gone through one of your own slides and you started looking at things and you're like, wait a minute, that doesn't look right. Or maybe you got something from somebody else or somebody put a slide together for you or your audience, even worse, called it out and said, um, that's not looking right. So make sure you source where the statistics are coming from and then make sure that they add up right. Simple stuff so far, right? We'll get into some, some more fancy ones like this one. Keep your border around the edges. Can't stand it, personally, and I know other people can't either, when you've got text that goes all the way to the edge of the screen. Because in the situation that you might be in where your projector has been changed, the settings are different, or you can't fix something, and maybe the screen has shifted over a little bit, or maybe somehow this room shook, or somebody got really mad, or they were playing beach balls in here, and the projector got hit, and we can't fix that, and it's over to the edge, at least you've got a buffer. Right? At least you've got the buffer. That's why if you take a look at, if you've ever watched a sports game, they don't have the scores right at the bottom. They've got the scores floating on the screen, probably about an inch up from the bottom of the screen, if not more. So make sure you keep a border. The border that I've got is a half inch. So on your actual laptop, you take a look. What's a half inch look like? What's an inch look like? And put that border in there. It just looks clean, doesn't it? Have you seen any slides that you've been like, wow, Joe, that is an ugly slide you put together? No, I've used all of these and it just looks clean. Next idea, it's all marketing and branding. Maintain a consistent theme. So pick one or two fonts and use those fonts all the time. Pick a few colors and use the colors that are going to work the most. And use good colors. You take a look, yes, I changed the background here. And this green on this background, it's hard to read. It's also a sloppy font. Everything that you do is marketing and branding. It is a reflection of you. Just how uh, Don in the video was saying, whatever font you choose is a reflection of you, everything's a reflection of you. Everything. This is your presentation. This is your training. All right. All right, number nine is use the rule of thirds. Anyone in photography? You know the rule of thirds? I'm going to show you the rule of thirds instead of explaining what it is. Here's a picture that was taken with the rule of thirds. This is the first third. This is the second third. Here's another picture identically taken on the second third line. Here's another picture that was taken that I'm not adjusting these pictures. They're just good pictures. Here is taken directly from your website. Look how it also uses the thirds. That car is right on the first third and the top third. And that is where people's eyes go. Here's me taking a picture of my computer using the rule of thirds. If you have a smartphone and iPhone, you see these lines? I did not put those there. Those are lines on my phone. How many of you have an Apple iPhone? Have you ever taken a look at it yet? Pull out your phones right now. If you've got an Android, go ahead, pull out that too. If you don't have a smartphone, it's 2015. <laughs> <laughs> So go, I know Apple phones, so if you go into your phone, there's uh, certain settings that you can plug into. So if you got the phone here, so the setting would be, that one. 
it actually might be in settings. I don't know if it's in the phone directly, but how many of you, when you opened up your phone, you've got the lines already there? Anyone? Okay. It might be in the settings app. That's how Apple does their things. I know Google has their, all the settings in each app. So it might be in your settings, and you can go to the camera settings, and do you want the lines there? It's called grid line. Yes, it is in settings. I'm sorry. It's in settings. I did this six years ago and never went back. So if you go to settings for your phone, or if you're in Google and you have settings in there, it's called grid lines. And the grid lines are divided up into thirds. And we want to ideally put things, if you're using a picture or taking pictures, put things on the thirds. It's really interesting. You can Google the rule of thirds, and you can see pictures that look before they take the thirds and, in the, and then after. And what happens is it will say, which picture do you like better? And you'll choose your picture. It will show you the grid lines, and you will more than likely like the picture that uses the rule of thirds. Which means if you take a picture of the horizon, don't have the horizon right in the middle. The horizon should be on this line or the top line. If there's a mountain line, put it on the top line. There is no science behind this. It is just what human beings consider beautiful. We can't explain it any other way. So if you've got to use a picture, find a way to use it with the rule of thirds. Any questions on that one? I'm just going to say it is the law. So just use it. Right. Manage proximity, alignment, and white space. How many of you have ever seen a slide look like that? Right, where the text is too close, or it's too close to the edge, or over the edge, and there's no good use of white space. You know what white space is called, or what it is in design? You ever seen a, here, I'll give you an example. <coughs> Take a look at this right here. This is the white space. Even if this was printed on blue paper, this would be considered the white space. It's all the space where there is nothing. Because it puts your focus on the things that you want to see. Every good design has a good use of white space. Every good slide has a good use of white space. Less is more. Fancy is distracting. With me so far? Is this helpful so far? Good. We want something clean. We'll make the logo bigger, bigger, and bigger. And still show the product image from the left to right, front, top, and down. And then detail shots of every feature. Put in our web address, toll-free number, local phone number, fax, shop address, and the PO box address. Also QR codes, which nobody uses anymore. Down over here, list every other product we manufacture. Show the logos of everyone who's ever called us and the logos of every award we've ever won, including the certificate from the local preschool. Okay, now show the price. And then the R. RP price, now the amount they would save, will need full descriptions of everything the product does at possible uses. We don't think the customers will understand from the images. Can you put a line here, a color block here, here, and here? Can you make the text bigger here, 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 and here? Also here, minimize the spacing because we want to put our product warranty information as well. Now put a background image in. Also use a lot more color everywhere. Now that's nice and clean. Wait, there's a half an inch of white space. Add some claims, please. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, right? That's the idea. You want to make it clean. So manage spacing between objects as well. What can't you stand about this slide right there? Yeah, it looks like it was just crammed in there. How many slides are in the presentation that you use look like things are just crammed in there? And it doesn't take a lot of work to fix it. So we can take this slide and we can fix it nicely and easily. What's different in that slide? And it's all and the picture is now balanced as well. Right? Next, as we use pictures in slides, use implied motion to guide the eyes of the audience. So I'll give you some visuals that make sense of what implied motion is. Where does that card tell you to look? left, and people read left to right, so it's telling you backwards, right? <coughs> Does that seem different? Is that a different feeling? You don't like that one? That's the appropriate one. Because people read left to right, so it's aiming you this way. I'll give you another example. What if I did the finger point that way? Where's the finger pointing? Forward. Off the screen, right? It's taking your attention away from the screen as opposed to putting it here. 
All right? And that's what's called implied motion. Where is the text, where are the things putting people's eyes? Where is it guiding their eyes? The next law, Network 13, tell a story with full screen images. You've probably got lots of images. I've seen some of the books. I know what they look like. But take a look at this screen and tell me what's the difference between this image, this slide right here, and this one. I go back and forth and you tell me the difference. Which one looks better? The one with the full screen image, right? So you might have to manipulate images. You might have to change where the text is. You might have to eliminate text. <gasps> That's okay, isn't it? You know where this picture was taken? Is that what you're talking about? Talking about the speed of the sound. Yeah, I was impressed by that too. I did notice that. I was like 80. By the way, as I was driving here, most people were passing me at 90. <laughs> I was like, wow. Yeah. This, this, road, this is a 70 mile an hour road. <laughs> we're, going, we're going 90 here. I'm like, okay. Welcome to Kentucky. <laughs> yeah. Right? So again, yeah, more, big difference. Photos, you were saying half inch or more, but on a photo. Is on a photo, make it the whole screen, because it's a photo. Just like a movie, a movie wouldn't have the border, it would be the whole thing. Have the border for the text. Yeah, the text doesn't go all the way to the top or the sides as well. How many of you know there's a couple images you might have to change? And by a couple, I mean a thousand, right? A little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. Balance the space. Here's three cars, what do you hate about that picture? <laughs> you hate the car. <laughs> so let's let's adjust the picture a little bit. And now it's a little bit better. But you know what you can do with pictures that don't have a background? You can also use PowerPoint to remove backgrounds if, if you're good. That's fancy stuff. But you can also make it a complete picture. And that's very different then what people typically do is they just put one picture next to another, next to another, without even resizing, without doing anything, they just put them there, right? And I did, I just put them right up there, and there's even something down here as part of this picture. Have you ever seen that, where you're like, people just don't edit the pictures? Yeah. So here, got rid of it, and then here it just looks clean. It looks like those cars belong there, right? With me so far? All right, take a deep breath. We're more than halfway through the slide laws. I know these are laws. These aren't all, the, all that much fun, but they'll change everything that you do. All right? Okay. Number 15, adjust the images. Here's how you adjust them. Picture corrections and color corrections. Hopefully we're using stuff with color. I know in the books a lot of things are just black and white. I know they're just graphics or, or just lines. But this is the way that you can adjust those pictures. So this is a screenshot from my laptop of first me using different correction here for making things brighter, changing the contrast. If something doesn't look right on your computer, it might not look right on the projector. And every projector is different. So just to make sense of it, I'm actually gonna do this with you right now. So let's take this car right here. Up at the top, we've got corrections, color and artistic effects. You almost never need to use artistic effects because you're gonna do stuff like this and the car's gonna get weird looking. You almost never need to use one of these, but again, Microsoft likes things to be, you know, you have options. Is that what you want your car looking like? How about this one? A car from Tron. <laughs> so corrections, if it doesn't look right on the, on the screen, you can change that very simply. Sometimes pictures are too white, sometimes they're not white enough. You can change the brightness or you can change contrast. And if you've got any PowerPoint version from 2010 and on, it'll show you immediately as you hover over. And then you can get into more picture options. You can sharpen things if you need to. You can make them duller. And you can also change the color. So you can make it more colorful. You can make it blue if you really wanted to. You don't need to, but you could. You got a little bit more of an orange hue because it's heated up the temperature. You add more fire to it. You can make it colder, which things become blue when you do that. 
you can take all of the color out of the image. That doesn't change much because it's a light bar. But if you take a look at the front left blinker light, you see here it's yellow, and here it's gray. So there's a lot of different adjustments that you can make. You're never going to want to do this, so don't. But play around with it, and if you feel a picture doesn't look appropriate, how can you adjust it without going crazy and without ruining it? Number 16, as we learned from Don, use charts and graphs to simplify descriptions and paragraphs. If you have to put a paragraph on the screen, can you do it visually instead? Can you do a pie chart of pie charts? You're never going to forget that, are you? That's the other reason why I show you. Because I can show you what to do, but like Don says, when I show you what not to do, that's what remember, that what we remember. That's what stays in our mind. Here's a chart, a graph, an image. It's called an infographic. You've probably seen these. These have become very popular over the last couple of years. How to buy a used car. Is that more appealing than me putting text on the screen? Right? And you can break up the image. You can have it scroll if you've got something really big. Here's another one. Car buying in 2012. It tells a story, does it not? I can talk to you as much as I want, but you can see right here where traffic shot up. You can see the amount of hours. You can see the picture. Here's another example that tells the story even better. 72% of motor vehicles reported stolen are passenger cars. And you can see through the visual what does 72% look like? You know, back in 1998, Hewlett Packard and Com uh, Compact? Is that the Compact, right? Yeah, Compact. They came together, they created the first ever digital music device. How many of you have an HP or Compact digital music player? That's right, nobody, because no one bought it. Because the way they marketed it, they said, we will give you one gigabyte of data. You can store one gigabyte of music. How many of you know what one gigabyte of music is? <laughs> Outside of our tech genius. <laughs> and then along comes Apple in, I think, 2003. And instead of saying, using that failed example of here's what one gigabyte of data, they didn't say, we're going to give you two gigabytes. They said. 1,000 songs in your pocket. And that's why people have iPods. That's why we have iPhones. That's why we have now iPads and the iEverything. We're going to have iHumans in the future. Wait for it. You heard it here first. iHuman. Right? Right. Can you imagine what 1,000 songs look like? Paint a picture. Use a graphic. Right. Next law, reduce text. Reduce text. I'm not even going to read to you the paragraph below because it's telling you everything you already know. But in this example alone, you are seeing why to reduce text because what's everyone doing right now? Reading the paragraph. What's faster, talking or reading? Can you talk faster than you read? Think about that. I'm going to try and not make you wrong in this instance. But when I was reading the alcohol slides or the other slides or the image, were you faster than me when you were reading it or was I faster than you when I was reading it out loud? You're faster when you read it with your mind. It takes longer to talk it, right? So by the time I start reading whatever's on the slide, you're already done. Right? That's why we've got to eliminate that. Because people are going to be faster than you. By the time you click, they're halfway through what you're about to look at. Which is also why we need to know our what? Slides. slides. Know your slides, know your content, know your stuff. Turn to your neighbor, look at them and say, hey, you got to know your stuff. <laughs> Use clean and what I'd like to say bold fonts, not fancy, no fancy illegible fonts. I know that might mean changing all of your fonts on every single slide. But whatever it is, whatever new stuff you design, design it so that it's clean and easy to see from far away as well. I know in one of the rooms that I visited, it's only 20 feet deep. So 
So it doesn't matter all that much. But what about people who are far and wide? Right? They've got to be able to see it too. And the wider you are from something, the skinnier it gets. Right? Number 19, use size 60 or greater. And you can see the difference right there. I showed you earlier what size 10 looks like. All the way in the back of the room, what's your favorite font? Just pick one size. What's your favorite size that you're looking at right now? Like the 60? Right? You, you can barely see 10. 20 is okay, 30 is all right, but when you start comparing it to the ones that are bigger, now you're making a difference. And people don't have to strain their eyes to see it. What, what does a larger font size do, and for, I should say, what does it force you to do? Eliminate the, the, eliminate the amount of content and text on the screen. So it forces you to do the things that you, we, we know we need to do. Right? Number 20, make critical points bigger. If you're talking about a percentage, just put the percentage up there and let people see the percentage. And in small text, you can put what the percentage is. And you'll see this in advertisements. You see this in TV all the time. They use this everywhere. So let's start doing it in our trainings as well. You'll see in car commercials, they put the, the price up here and then they put the $6,000 down in smaller font. And then the warranty and all the other information that the Micro Machines guy speeds out is in font that's this, uh, this tiny at the bottom of the screen, right? And it's a paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> Keep bullets simple. You already saw this from Don, but if you can make it fit on one line, that would be great. The less words, the better. Things look busy and overwhelming. The more text you add, the smaller the font size needs to be. That's not good. Plus, do you see that word great hanging from the first bullet? That's not good either. Doesn't that look like a lonely word? That's bad in editing, too. So when people write books, they try to fix that. They try to make whatever it is not be one line on another slide. If you have to do bullets, animate them like this so that the people are focusing on one thing at a time. You can put up your second, and your third bullet, and your next bullet, oops, and then click too fast. Number 23, check spelling and grammar. Have you ever done that before? You went through your site, you're like, oops, right? There's a big difference. <laughs> Hey, I put this up there because I've seen people have these problems between then and then and farther and further, there, there, and there, and there, and the rest of them. How many of you have seen people? What's the difference between farther and further? Mom um, and <laughs> Farther is something you can actually measure. This is good just in, in our conversation as well when you're doing this. I had to be taught this because I kept doing it the wrong way. You can actually measure what farther is, right? Angie is farther than Tommy from me. Further is almost metaphorical, like it's further out there. You can't measure that, right? And you can look up the difference for more, but grammar in the way we speak and also grammar in what we're doing on the slides. And that's, that's number 23, is that all right? Is that good laws to abide by? Is that overwhelming for us? A little bit, right? A lot of editing. Yeah, you can spend the whole next year probably editing and changing things. But look at this though, isn't it amazing that you can read this? When you solve this puzzle, shout. We can read it even though there's incorrect grammar. So if you do have incorrect grammar, call it out loud and say, well, you could read it anyway, not a big deal. And here's what Adam says, keep the design as simple as possible. Design each product well enough that the user can't possibly imagine it looking any other way. I've done the same thing with slides that I did with the room, the way the room looks. I didn't take a look at that room, so I get no step. <laughs> you don't like the way that room is? Right? But this is what Apple says. Oh, you want to take a picture of that? Go ahead. Thank you. Faster. Rule 30. 
We're waiting for you, Tech Genius. Yes. I got 12, I can send you three. <laughs> <laughs> Good design is as little design as possible. The only animations that I've used are text fades and slide fades. That's it. And I know half of you were thinking, did he design that in PowerPoint? Yes, and I didn't use any of the fancy stuff, and that's the difference. Keep it as simple as possible. If, if you're with me on simplicity, say, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. If you really like things complicated, say, I like it complicated. See, nobody. Nobody likes things complicated. So what, now what? Turn to a neighbor or write down for yourself what's one or two things, just one or two things, that you'll do immediately in your next presentation. If you can't do 23, <laughs> you can do one or two.